Hello friends and welcome back to Roots Tube. This video lecture details about the structure of vascular tissues and their location in plants. We have seen in the previous part of this chapter that how green plants autotrophs undergo photosynthesis utilizing sun's energy and various raw materials to produce food. We also learned that about the sources of these raw materials and so we know that how plants take simple inorganic compounds like carbon dioxide from air and synthesize food in leaves. Water is an essential ingredient which is obtained from the nearest source, soil. But soil is also the richest source of minerals like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium and these minerals are also taken up by plants dissolved in water. Now if the distance between the soil and the plant organ which is in contact with the soil like roots and leaves is small then water and food can easily diffuse to all the parts of the plant body. Like in case of thalloid structure of algae and bryophytes, those have no stem, root or leaves. But when we talk about gymnosperms and angiosperms, this is the tallest reported angiosperm. And even pteridophytes, plants in which this distance between the source of water, soil and the destination area, the various stem, branches, leaves is larger because of the changes in their body design. In such situations, a proper transportation system is needed. So to understand the transport in plants, in this part of video lecture, I'll explain you the structure of vascular tissues, xylem and phloem, which conducts water and food in tall plants. Let's start with a little stem anatomy. Imagine that you're holding a handful of drinking straws and chopsticks with a rubber band around them. Now this bundle is your imaginary plant stem and the rubber band, the drinking straws and the chopsticks, they represent the three different types of tissues found in the plant stem. So rubber band here symbolizes the dermal tissue that covers the outside of the plant stem. Like we have skin which acts as a protective layer. Ideally the rubber band should completely cover the whole makeshift of stem bundle. So you will just have to imagine, you have to use your own imaginations here. The chopsticks fill in the space between the rubber band and the drinking straws and represent the ground tissue. So ground tissue is made up of the cells that provide structural support to the stem like sclerenchyma. Those are the dead and hard uh, cells, tissues which provide support. The drinking straws represent the third type of tissue which are vascular tissues, means xylem and phloem. I can show you the same structure here in the leaf tissue anatomy. So these, uh, this is the vascular tissue with xylem and phloem, it's a branch of it. And this is how these dermal tissue, epidermal, upper epidermis and lower epidermis. Then we have ground tissues consisting of these uh, mesophyll cells. These are pellicid mesophyll cells and these are spongy mesophyll cells with spaces in between. And those spaces are actually occupied this, by um, these vascular tissues, xylem and phloem. So this is how all the type of tissues uh, like xylem and phloem were representing the straws here and these chopsticks are representing the ground tissue which fill in the space in between and uh, sclerenchyma also which provides support and then we have the rubber band as the dermal tissue these upper and lower epidermis so this is how we see the anatomy and we see the structure now these uh, vascular tissue the plant transport system includes two independent vascular tissues or conducting tissues we can say. First is phloem which is a living tissue that transports the soluble organic compound uh, made during photosynthesis and uh, to all the parts wherever it is needed. And second is um, taking water and dissolve nutrients from the root, root upward is xylem. So you can see it here, it here in this picture this is a tree and here uh, we have seen we are seeing a section of the tree the outermost is bark and then the next layer is that of phloem phloem tissue which carries the organic um, 
sugars and then we have a layer of cambium and then xylem so this is how xylem and phloem are arranged so xylem is towards the inner side of the cambium and phloem is towards the outer side of the cambium and uh, this is how it is arranged in the stem of the tree you can see here better so this is the section cut from the stem the outermost hard dark brown color layer is um, bark and then we have this um, next to it is phloem this yellow color sheet represents a layer of the cells called cambium and then inner to it is xylem and this is hardwood hardwood is actually the old xylem which um, is no more conducting anything but it is now acting as a support tissue and this is the young xylem which helps in conduction of water and dissolved minerals now what is this cambium cambium is actually an undifferentiated layer of cells which is continuously dividing and producing xylem to its inner side and phloem to its exterior to the exterior side so these are the cells it's a layer of cell and since it is producing the vascular tissue xylem and phloem so we also call it vascular cambium so this is the um, positioning the arrangement of xylem and phloem now let's discuss the structure of these tissues um uh, first is the structural components of xylem so xylem is actually made up of four main components tracheids vessels fibers and parenchyma so most distinctive xylem cells are the long tracheal elements these are tracheary tracheary elements that transport water and then we have these vessel elements they are connected together into uh, a long tube they join together one upon the other and they form a long tube called xylem vessel these two components are dis distinguished by their shape and their size vessel elements are shorter while tracheids are long and thin xylem tracheid is pointed on both the ends and it is closed so for the conduction of water vertically upwards tracheids have pits with the pores and vessels have uh, these perforated ends xylem transports water and minerals through these two elements because they are elongated tubular channels with wider lumen so they can accommodate more of water easily xylem also contains two other cell types which is parenchyma and uh, fibers so parenchyma stores food and it helps in the sideways conduction of water also and fibers are mainly supportive in action function so um, this is how these four components should be arranged fibers b is these are the vessel elements uh, sorry element xylem elements which are then um, joined together stacked upon each other to form the xylem vessel and then we have a layer of parenchyma and then are the tracheids these are the tracheids joined to each other and they have pits they have pores for conduction so this is the arrangement and this is the actual arrangement of these four components in the stem these blue colored structures are the vessel elements one upon the other forming xylem vessel these green color are the tracheids so these two are the major they have a major role in the conduction of water and then sideways it's completely protected by fibers and then in between there are some parenchyma cells also so this is the arrangement of xylem components next is the structural components of phloem so these are the four main components of phloem um it consists of uh, conducting tissues conducting cells called sieve elements and then parenchyma cells companion cells and supportive cells you know, such as fibers and tracheids so this is the structure sieve elements are the type of cells that are responsible for transporting sugars throughout the plant so at maturity they lack nucleus they do not have a nucleus and they have very few organelles also so they completely rely on the type of cells called companion cells so you can see here these are the sieve elements one upon the other so this is a sieve tube and for each sieve element there is one companion cell and as i said sieve elements do not have a nucleus they do not have the major of the organelles 
so they are dependent upon these companion cells for most of their needs for all the metabolic um, activities all the needs and these companion cells do have nucleus and organelles so all of the cellular functions of a sieve tube element are carried out by much smaller companion cells are typically nucleated plant cells i would say so sieve elements have a group of pores at their ends on both the ends rather and uh, these this is called sieve area or you can also call it sieve plate and just like as i had shown you here these vessel elements stacked over one another to form xylem vessel same here the sieve elements are stacked upon each other and then they form a long tube called sieve tube and this is the actual arrangement of um, phloem components this is the this um, mustard or orange colored tube is sieve tube these are sieve elements one upon the other and con they are conducting in both the directions they are conducting the sugars dissolved sugar or cell sap and uh, these blue colored are the um these are the companion cells for each sieve element there is one companion cell so uh, that's here and then we have parenchyma and then fibers again parenchyma in between and fibers around to acting as a protective tissues providing strength to the plant parts now um you can see here in this is the section of the stem and these structures these um, conical structures are actually called vascular bundle now this vascular bundle is consisting of two vascular tissues xylem and phloem so xylem and phloem are arranged in the stem or uh, yes in the stem uh, together in the form of this vascular bundle so this is 1 2 3 4 5 so these are arranged like this and this is phloem towards the outer side and this is xylem towards the center towards the pith towards the core of the stem and um, so vascular bundles are the part of plants transport system containing xylem and phloem and some supportive tissue and fibers are also there xylem and phloem are arranged in different patterns so uh, this is again the same section of the stem and these are one vascular bundle second third fourth and so on so this is a vertical section or i would say the longitudinal section and um as i said the xylem this is orange colored structure is xylem which is towards the pith towards the center and this brown colored is phloem which is towards the exterior of the section towards of the stem so here it has enlarged this is orange colored structure towards the center this is xylem with these are the xylem vessels uh, water is moving upwards and this brown colored structure to the outer to the exterior of the section is phloem and these are the sieve plates sieve element and sieve tube and with each sieve element there is one companion cell and if you can notice it clearly each sieve tube rather sieve element is connected with the companion cell and as i said there is no nucleus and here companion cell do have a nucleus and these two there is there is a kind of a bridge in between the walls of these two type of cells and that is called plasmodesmata which helps um in transport sideways conduction so that's how companion cells help in sideways conduction and also the products of the metabolic activities in the companion cells are then drained into the sieve element for their use so this is how they are connecting and there is one another thing third thing this yellow line is called cambium which is as i told you earlier um let me show you again here in the section of the stem i told you this yellow color line is cambium to its interior is the xylem to its exterior is the phloem and i bring it back here so to the interior of the cambium is xylem and to the exterior is phloem so this is a layer of undifferentiated cells which keep on dividing to produce xylem on the inner side and phloem on the outer side so that is called cambium and we also call it vascular cambium since it's producing vascular tissue xylem and phloem so that's how it is now 
they are xylem and phloem are arranged in different patterns so these are the different patterns where here blue color indicates it represents xylem and green is for phloem so we can see the here different arrangement of xylem and phloem in vascular bundles but majorly we see that xylem is always towards the core towards the center and phloem is towards the exterior so i can show you here so we have just seen xylem towards the interior and phloem towards the exterior xylem typically lies ad axial we use another term here ad axial while phloem is positioned ab axial it means that the xylem is closer to the center ad axial is closer to the center of the stem or root while the phloem is closer to the exterior ab axial so we use ab axial term for phloem and ad axial for xylem uh, we can see this in this section of stem like in a ciliary stick this is a ciliary stick and these dots are vascular bundles so if i take this as one vascular bundle this translucent section is xylem which is towards the center which is ad axial position and the darker green structure is phloem part of the vascular bundle bundle which is towards the outer exterior that means ab axial so i think it's clear now ad axial is towards the center and ab axial is towards the Uh, away from the center or towards the exterior so um, so this is the structure and this is the microscopic view now xylem is towards the interior and phloem is towards the exterior it's the same ciliary stick with its microscopic view here and if we have to locate xylem and phloem in leaves so in a leaf ad axial which means xylem ad axial surface of the leaf is uh, the it's usually the upper side and the ab axial is the lower side containing phloem so ad axial in leaves is upper side and it contains xylem and ab axial is the lower side and it contains phloem this is ad axial the upper side ab axial the lower side of the leaf so that's why you know we see aphids these aphids are generally seen they are found on the underside of the leaf this is the lower surface of the leaf lower leaf surface uh, so we find aphids on the lower uh, surface on the underside of the leaf rather than on the top since the sugars manufactured by the plant are transported by the phloem and we have just seen that ab axial is phloem so that means the underside of the leaf is closer to the phloem and if it have to suck the sugars so that's why if it are on found always on the lower surface uh, of the leaves so this was all about the structure and arrangement of vascular tissues in the plant in the next part i'll explain you the mechanism of the transportation in plants and to stay updated subscribe my channel roostube and don't forget to click the notification bell have a good day